worse. <laughs> I would uh, like you to just share with us a little bit. I know that your background is uh, so intriguing. So you, you grew up in Africa. Tell us about that experience and how that influences or shapes who you are as now the leader at UNI. Uh, thank you. Yes, I uh, grew up in uh, Tunisia, uh, North Africa. Um, um, and the value of education was um, embedded in everything we did. My father um, was an educator. He was... Um, uh, uh, a principal for uh, elementary uh, school and uh, I remember vividly when I was young he was affected to a very uh, poor village in the center of Tunisia to uh, to lead uh, elementary school there no electricity wow. and when I when I tell um, my kids uh, we grew up without electricity their first question is you mean you did not have Wi-Fi? You did not. <laughs> you did not have Netflix. Right. No, we did. We did not have neither. Actually, um, we had. We had one oil lamp and and um, several candles. That's how we spent wow. our evening. And and my father yeah. used to every week night to take that oil lamp, the only one that we had, uh, and we could afford at that time, so that he can prepare the students, provide them with tutoring to prepare them for a major national exam that will allow them at a young age either go to high school or stop their education. Um, um, and of course he was uh, doing it um, um, for free to change the lives of these students. And I remember this, I was four years old or so, um, I was asking my father one day, he's like, um, Dad, this is unfair. Why are you taking our only oil lamp leaving us with candles so that you can teach others. He said, listen, son, uh, and every time he says, listen, son, I really need to listen. He was <laughs> a, a very wise man. Uh, he said, these uh, students need, need it more than we do because they need this education to change their lives, the lives of their families, and be great citizens for our community. And that really stuck with me. Um, what he did, in a way, he defined for me at the age of four what student success is all about, what, how noble um, of a job to be an educator. So this is how I grew up, um, um, went to undergraduate um, um, college uh, at the Institut Supérieur de Gestion in Tunis, uh, the best business school there. I remember uh, kind of the very first day the orientation. The dean came to us and said, I have good news and I have bad news. Which one you want me to start with? We all said, I don't know why. Get a, give us the good news. He said, we have a scholarship for graduate school in the U.S. Everything full ride, everything paid for. Like, wow, this is great. What is the bad news? He said, we have one. And we were more than 3,000 students. Wow. and that orientation. So I really set that goal and said, I want that scholarship. And don't get me wrong, still had fun and studied and, and got that scholarship, came to the University of Minnesota and uh, had my MBA and PhD, then went to Quebec, uh, Laval University in Quebec City, and spent a few years there, uh, discovered um, leadership as a department chair, very young, went to Hong Kong uh, and had our uh, son that was born there, and from Hong Kong we moved to Switzerland. Uh, stay a few years, and from Switzerland we went to Arkansas. A lot of people say, why did you do that? Actually, it, it was a great move that made a lot of sense for us, spent good years there, and for the last 10 years, um, uh, spent them at, uh, in Tampa Bay with USF. So this whole experience from young age to four different continents where we uh, lived, studied, or worked really shaped who I am, mm -hmm. shaped my, uh, and fueled my passion for education, um, as we always say, if you find something that you love, you're passionate about, you will never work one day of your life. And um, I really feel that I'm not working. I'm having a blast. I'm really enjoying every second of it. Despite the difficulties and the challenges that you might expect to come with this job, but I'm loving it. And you will always see me smile. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I, this is us just getting to know each other a little bit. So my college experience included that, hey, s summer semester study abroad. So as a 20-year-old, my 21st birthday in Paris, I studied uh, in Germany and then traveled all through Europe. It changes your Absolutely. worldview 
it, it opens your mind, right? Yeah. The, the, the international experience seems like it's so valuable. Absolutely. Absolutely. It really um, changes your view of the world, um, increases your resilience, mm. um, also um, helps you understand how and why people behave certain ways. It, it makes it much easier for you to be embedded in different communities and as, as when you move like we did. So yeah. that this is why, Kent, um, one of the always very strong recommendations I always make to our students, please, that we call them the high impact practices, two things, study broad as much as possible. And, and because of the generosity of many of our great donors, we provide scholarships. We would love to provide even more because it is expensive to travel sure. now. So that is uh, one high impact factor. The second one is internships, that experiential learning. Yeah. Research tell us that 93% of students who go through an internship, a meaningful internship of course, will have a job at graduation or very shortly after. 93%. That's just incredible. Yeah.